Hey guys, how's it going? It's Clarissa with That Dumb Movie Show and first off, apologies for the hiatus there. I know I said something on Twitter but I don't think I actually said anything on here so sorry for that. I just had a lot of stuff going on so wasn't able to prioritize this unfortunately for a month or so but sorry and I'm back and I'm excited and again on Twitter I asked you guys what film you wanted me to cover for this and you guys pretty much said Christopher Robin! We're talking Disney's Christopher Robin, not the Donald Gleason movie from last year, Goodbye Christopher Robin, or any adaptation of an A.A. Milne book or an animated movie. This is a newly imagined sequel focused on a now grown Christopher Robin, played by Ian McGregor, who in true Hook style has become something of a workaholic. He'll regularly abandon his family on a weekend so that he can work overtime in his job as an efficiency expert at a luggage company. I know, so glamorous. And it's something his family have begrudgingly come to accept. That is, until Christopher's toy and pal Winnie the Pooh stumbles out of the Hundred Acre Woods and back into his life amused at how grumpy his former playmate has become. Now that sounds like a go-to premise for a family film, right? But what is interesting about Christopher Robin is that its primary target audience doesn't actually seem to be kids. I mean, the base requirements are there and I, I don't think that kids are going to not enjoy it. I mean, Pooh and his friends are extremely cute. I mean, look at this little face. Look at this little face, how can you resist it? And you know, the sufficient slapstick, there are mildly thrilling action sequences and who remains the Tao master that he's always been with such wonderful pooisms as people say nothing is impossible but I do nothing every day. But hovering over Christopher Robin is this sense of melancholy. It's as if Eeyore directed this movie. I mean in reality it's directed by Mark Forster who has this very diverse filmography and you know, he did World War Z and also Specific to this, Finding Neverland, which is the movie about J.M. Barry and the creation of Peter Pan, which is a sort of analogous story to the creation of Winnie the Pooh. And, you know, the, those films do share a similar tone. It's about the tragedy of adulthood as a loss of innocence and a loss of imagination. And I think that is so condensed into one shot in this movie of Pooh dreamily brushing his hand along the lavender, which is a shot that is straight out of the Terrence Malick playbook of all the inspirations to take for your movie about a talking bear. So yeah, that's a little weird, but I think there is a methodology here, and that is Disney playing into the power of poo, which please no one clip that out of context, please. You know, it's just a character with such a long, rich history and has sentimental value for generations and generations of people. You know, I've always been very emotionally attached to Piglet because I think as an anxious person, he just gets me and my inability to do anything calmly. But this is very much an exploitation of nostalgia and not the Ready Player One kind of nostalgia. You know, the original meaning of that word as a kind of sadness for time past and things lost and you know as exploitation goes this is pretty effective because when you see those toys and they just look frayed and a little worn down from maybe one adventure too many and then that very sweet theme strikes up you know the classic theme of Winnie the Pooh Winnie the Pooh nee, 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 nee. you know it's hard not to well up a little bit I think if you're gonna see this just Bring a friend that you can have a nice long hug with afterwards. And also what adds to that sense of maturity is that underneath this sweet fable is a wider historical context at work because, you know, that story of the dad who's learning to spend more time with his family is being seen through the lens of a post-World War II era and that gives it a few extra layers. So, you know, he's not just the guy who is fixated with his career. He's a man trying to give his family a good life after everything that, that they've suffered, but trying to do it within this skeleton of an economy. You know, he's not just a, an adult who's lost his sense of play. He is a man traumatized by war. One detail that I did like, and I know that this is small, but Christopher Robin's wife, Evelyn, played by Hayley Atwell, is shown to be working during the war. She's designing plane schematics and that is just so different from the vast majority of films like this where the wife during the war will just be standing by the window the whole time staring out and going 
oh, I wonder when my man will come home. And it's just always bugged me because it's very historically inaccurate. The vast, vast majority of women in Britain during World War II were employed. They were contributing to the war. And so it was just nice to change the trope up a little bit, especially because otherwise Evelyn is a fairly one-dimensional character. And you know, it's Hayley Atwell, guys. Don't give her boring roles. So yeah, Christopher Robin is something of an oddity. It's a kids movie that plays stronger to adults, but you know, hey, sometimes it's worth a risk. And not everyone's gonna be on board with that sense of melancholy, but I would rather Disney take the opportunity with a lower budgeted, lower stakes film like Christopher Robin just to experiment. And I think it's no mistake that they hired such a caliber of screenwriters. You know, to have Alex Ross Perry, who directed a bunch of indie movies that I love, like Queen of Earth, with contributions from Todd McCarthy, who directed Spotlight, and Alison Schroeder, who wrote Hidden Figures, you know, for them to just get together to try something, as opposed to just attempting to please the largest number of people possible. You know, I can get on board with that. And so because of that, I don't know, I, I just think Christopher Robin deserves a shot. Just give it a shot. But if you've had a chance to see Christopher Robin, I would love to know what you guys thought. You can let me know down in the comments below or you can hit me up on Twitter details down in that description box. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can hang out and talk about movies. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.